The UW-Madison campus spans over about 933 acres. The city itself has been named a bicycle-friendly campus and has a very strong network of bicycle and pedestrian routes. There are various different methods of transportation that the city provides and allows for student and professors alike to get from A to B. From moped traffic to the free bus transportation uh, service, Madison's diverse tra transportation system is unique. Pedestrians, bicycles, and various types of other vehicles share Madison's streets, which can pose problems in the more population-dense areas. During passing periods between classes, intersections of Charter and Linden and Charter and Observatory become overly congested with students trying to get from class to class. This creates many different conflict points between pedestrians and vehicles. Our project is going to focus on proposing potential solutions to the problems with these intersections. Knowing that there's not one real solution to these intersections, we will use the knowledge that we have gained from CEE 370 to propose an effective solution. What you just watched was a video of bollards stopping a truck dead in its tracks. Our idea is to install these bollards, which are retractable, on the intersection of Linden and Charter as you can see here. These bollards will not only stop vehicles from hitting pedestrians, but when used in tandem with stop signs, will let drivers know that their vehicle must come to a stop and that the intersection is currently being occupied by pedestrians. The literature we are using to guide our design consists of technical documents on the bollards obtained from the manufacturer's website. This information, this contains information on collision speeds, material properties, installation, and pricing. We are also using information from the textbook for oversaturation design, potential human factors, and information regarding peak hour. For data collection, we recorded the intersection of Charter and Linden during three different passing time periods. From there, we were able to count the number of vehicles, bikes, and pedestrians in order to obtain peak hour traffic volumes. For the intersection of Charter and Observatory, we used the data observed in class. We conducted an interview with a student who had just used this intersection, as well as a professor who frequents the area. Hi, I'm doing a project for transportation engineering, and I'm wondering if I can get your thoughts and opinions on this intersection and any problems you see with it. Um, it's a student. I love it. Um, but I do notice when I'm done with my late class that there's a huge line of cars backed up because of all the buses that come and because of all the students just crossing whenever they want. So I think there should be some sort of like signal or stoplight or something to help with that. Cool, thank you. Hello Dr. Pounder. Uh, what is your experience with the uh, intersections of Charter and Linden and Charter and Observatory? So I actually have a lot of experience with those because uh, I used to be in the history of science program, which used to be in the social sciences building up on the top of the hill there. And so I used to bike and walk up and down that hill a lot. And I know that the intersection, especially at Charter and Linden, is terrible. When classes change, people are moving across and cars are nuts. And also at rush hour, when everyone's trying to leave and everything's backed up and the students come out, it's really awful. Perfect. So what you're saying is something needs to be done. Yes. Awesome. So. I'll get on that. Thanks. What that occurs at these intersections are that it operates efficiently for the most part of the day, but during peak hours the intersections become oversaturated. An analysis of the Observatory Drive and Charter Street intersection was concluded that there are 48 conflict points that creates a safety hazard for pedestrians. To this problem include installing barriers that run perpendicular to traffic flow, or followers that run perpendicular to traffic flow, and barriers that are parallel to the intersection to concentrate pedestrian volume. Um, and our solution accommodates all types of traffic transportation, but prioritizes pedestrians because pedestrian safety is the emphasis of this intersection. Our analysis of the data at the Linden and Treader intersection, uh, we noticed that there's really only a two to three minute window at the beginning of each passing period where there's a large influx of students crossing both Charter and Linden. And after that, there's kind of a doldrums period where students are more or less just trickling in and out. So that part of the intersection, just stop, I'll start. Students are just trickling in and out at this point. Uh, it really isn't a point of emphasis. The real point that we have to emphasize is that two to three minute window where there's a lot of traffic by pedestrians. 
So our solution to that is to install bollards along Charter and Linden at these pedestrian crossings to stop traffic from going through to protect pedestrians and then also to install stop signs on both sides of Charter Street because uh, in our videos that we took we saw a lot of cars that were not really stopping they were just going through even if there were pedestrians which causes a big safety hazard. One way to increase efficiency of the corridor is to attempt to provide a more concentrated flow of pedestrian volumes during peak hours. We attempt to do this by directing the pedestrians to the crosswalks that already exist through the installation of parallel barriers similar to those that already exist on University Avenue. In addition, concentrating pedestrian volumes to the crosswalks will reduce the human factor uncertainties that vehicle operators experience in these areas. Retractable bollards will then be installed that are triggered by inductance loops in an effort to increase the safety of the intersections. Finally, since there are, no cur since there are currently no stop signs at the Charter Street and Linden Street intersection, we would recommend installing stop signs to better accommodate all types of transportation. An alternative solution to the problem would be to separate vehicle traffic and pedestrian traffic. We can attempt to separate flows by constructing bridges. However, due to space and grade limitations of the intersections, bridges are not conceivable for this project. On the other hand, constructing a skyway that travels from the existing grade east of the Charter and Linden intersection and ends near Van Heys would provide enough clearance for vehicles to travel beneath it and also decrease the pedestrian and vehicle interaction at this intersection. Unfortunately, the solution is not time or cost effective and we do not recommend it.